Hey everyone, Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, July 21st, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. Our goal is to provide the most helpful 10 minutes of EV and electrification stories available anywhere. In our first story this week, Mercedes-Benz and Starbucks have announced a partnership to install DC fast chargers at 100 Starbucks cafes across the country, starting in 2025. The first phase of the program will focus on adding DC fast chargers at Starbucks locations along the 1,400-mile Interstate 5 corridor, which spans from Canada to Mexico. Each location will feature 4 to 10 Alpatronic Hypercharger 400 fast chargers, rated up to 400 kilowatts and fitted with NAX connectors. The two companies say the chargers will be placed in core urban areas and charging deserts. Future locations will be identified later on, including markets on the East Coast. This partnership not only aims to reduce range anxiety for EV drivers, but also supports Starbucks' goal to reduce carbon emissions by 50% by 2030. Starbucks says there are already more than 1,000 licensed and company-operated stores in the U.S. with nearby access to EV charging. That equates to about 5% of their 17,000 locations. Mercedes' stated commitment to charging infrastructure in the USA is right up there with GM and Tesla. They announced their own network to deploy 2,500 charge points with at least 400 hubs in North America by 2030. Mercedes is also one of the eight automakers contributing to the charging network, IANA, which aims to build out a minimum of 30,000 charge points by 2030. The brand also has committed to switching to the North American charging standard starting in 2025, giving their drivers the ability to charge at over 12,000 Tesla superchargers. Another luxury electric automaker is in the news this week with a notable achievement. The Lucid Motors Air Pure model has earned an EPA rating of 420 miles of range with only an 84 kilowatt hour battery pack. Lucid said this makes the Air the first passenger vehicle in the world to deliver five miles of range per kilowatt hour. Of course, that also translates to the highest MPGE, or miles per gallon equivalent, rating ever given to an EV with 146 miles per gallon equivalent from the EPA. Efficiency figures are important, especially at this stage of EV market development. Battery packs are the most expensive part of most EVs. When less materials are used, costs are lower, which can result in higher profitability for the automaker at lower prices for consumers. Great efficiency also results in lower operational costs for drivers. A couple of years ago, some friends and I managed to squeeze nearly 700 miles out of a single charge on public streets with a Lucid Air Dream Edition. Their efficiency was impressive then, and they keep on refining. I'll link that video in the description below. Bravo Lucid Motors for leading the way in highly efficient electric powertrains. Although many people want you to think the EV market is slowing, Q2 proved to be record setting with over 330,000 new EVs sold in the US. But we can't forget about the used EV market. Used car buyers are even more likely to consider EVs now that they can easily save $4,000 off the top by transferring their credit to the seller. Currently, more than 13,000 physical dealerships across the country have signed up to provide the used EV tax credit at the point of sale. Carvana has also implemented the credit on their app and website. We provide the customer with the paperwork needed for their tax return. Carvana then takes care of sending everything to the IRS portal for vehicle eligibility, said a company spokesperson. Have you or someone you know taken advantage of the used EV tax credit? If so, what kind of deals have you seen? Ford Motor Company has announced a change in its plans for its Oakville Assembly Complex in Ontario, Canada. The plant, which was initially slated to become a hub for electric vehicle production, with a third row electric SUV first in line, will now focus on expanding the production of Ford's Super Duty combustion-powered pickup trucks instead. The decision comes as Ford invests approximately $3 billion to expand Super Duty production, including $2.3 billion at the Oakville Assembly Complex. This move is expected to secure around 1,800 Canadian jobs at the plant, with production expected to begin in 2026. Ford currently produces their Super Duty trucks at its plants in Ohio and Kentucky, but the addition of the Oakville plant will increase capacity by roughly 100,000 units annually. Ford plans to produce the three-row electric SUV at an unspecified location starting in 2027.
In other Ford news, the company has extended the deadline for their EV owners to request a NAX DC fast charging adapter by two months to August 31st. I'll link the site below for those interested. Hyundai Motor Group's luxury performance brand, Genesis, has pulled back on their commitment to an all-electric future from 2025, with a full lineup of EV-only models by 2030. At the Festival of Speed last week, Mike Song, global head of Genesis, said, Five years back, we anticipated that the EV era would arrive very quickly, and we really wanted to be a leader and a disruptor in the EV space. Electrification is still our vision. We will have 100% electrified vehicles, but the market and the customers now want hybrids more than EV. So we really want to bring Genesis hybrids into the market as soon as possible. We will apply it to as many models as possible. As we have seen in recent weeks, Genesis isn't the only one pulling back on their EV goals. This past week, Mary Barra, CEO of General Motors, cautioned that the company would not have the production capacity to hit their 1 million EV target by the end of 2025. They have shifted some focus to plug-in hybrid and traditional hybrid models. Jaguar will have stopped production of five models by the end of this year. That will leave only the Chinese manufactured F-Pace as a bridge to the company's all-electric lineup starting in 2025. Parent company JLR's CEO, Adrian Mardell, said the five products being eliminated were lower value, lower transacting, and close to zero profitability. Jaguar's first all-electric vehicle on their new JEA modular platform is expected to be a four-door GT coming in 2025, followed by a large SUV and large sedan. What do you think about these delays and reprioritization towards hybrids and Jaguar staying the course? Last week, we reported that Tesla's RoboTaxi event, originally scheduled for August 8th, was rumored to have been delayed. This week, Elon Musk has confirmed the delay, citing his own request for a redesign of the vehicle's front end. He said the delay will provide the opportunity to show a few more features, but did not confirm a new date. This past week, we published two videos covering the NASCAR ABB No. 35 EV prototype. If you want to learn everything about electrification coming to NASCAR, there will be links to those in this video's description. Well, that's all for this week's edition of The Current. We will continue making this series as long as viewership continues to grow. If you haven't yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you considered subscribing and sharing this video if you found some value in this coverage. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.